It is now 20 years since I first gazed upon the old Luxor Hotel and met with my benefactor. An establishment, which I freely admit at that time was one that I was utterly ignorant of. Even of its very existence. And yet has since that day been the focus of my own. The Luxor Hotel of which I speak is not to be confused with the Pyramid of Absurdity, found in North America's gambling capital of Las Vegas, amongst the temples of the winners and the tombs of the losers. But the one in Luxor, Egypt, once the ancient city of Thebes, a capital of a now long gone civilization. A place where for over two millennia of its existence gods walked alongside mortals. My monumental tale begins in the present with a ghostly experience in the garden of this rundown and dilapidated Victorian hotel. One which tells of a divine encounter a century and a half earlier in the India of the British Empire, between a young girl and Wajet, the mystical snake of a native guru. The serpent sets her a riddle which sends her halfway across the world, to the old Luxor Hotel. Once there she is cured of the terrible disease that would have ended her life, saved by the fearsome and all-powerful cobra-headed goddess Meritsega, whose voice can deliver both mercy or vengeance, and who has the ability to warp time itself. From the very time of its opening in the December of 1877, it has shaped the lives of all who have ever stayed in its rooms and whose walls have absorbed the momentous events of the pharaonic civilization on which it stands. All of the characters in this my book were real people, who actually lived the events described. And who even spoke the very same words written in its pages, which together have made the old Luxor Hotel the most historically important of any in the world. I will reveal to you my readers the true story of a 3,000-year-old papyrus, that contained mystical spells, ones which the ancient Egyptians believed would cheat death itself and how a maverick Egyptologist smuggled it out of this very hotel, despite being guarded by soldiers of the Egyptian Antiquities Service, before it was sent to England where it can still be seen to this day in the British Museum. And of a meeting in the hotel's garden, between a playboy English lord and a disgraced archaeologist. Who after years of fruitless digging would find the tomb of a long-forgotten pharaoh, and of the curse created by the goddess Meritsega, which prophesied that death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. Out of this curse was born the legend of Tutankhamun. I will tell of a beautiful girl with the blackest of hair and the bluest of eyes, who refuses to open her heart to the hotel's talented and caring young doctor who has given her his own. And in the end sacrifices his life in the pursuit of her love. I will speak of her grief at coming to terms with his loss and how she overcame it through the power of the ancient Egyptian belief, where death is but only the beginning. And for those whose hearts are lighter than the feather of truth, they too will find a new life with those they love. A life that will last for all eternity amongst the field of reeds. I have heard it said that the three axes of time flow through Luxor, along which the line separating the past, the now and that to come, is but a turn of the head or a step away. And when the great mist comes and goes, the goddess Meritsega walks its path, and then anything becomes possible for she had the power to make it so. The great cobra goddess Meritsega returned one last time to the old Luxor Hotel on the very day, I met with my benefactor the late Muir Birch. And it was atop the ancient peak known as Tarda Hent, the sacred and mystical domain of this goddess who loves silence. That I agreed to write this my monumental tale. One which had begun long ago, amongst a field of reeds which once grew where the old Luxor Hotel now stands. It was here that Meritsega committed the sin of being human. And from this sin between serpent and man. All that I will tell was written. A play of Machiavellian proportions. Written by the gods themselves and acted out by the mortals, who are the characters in this my book. Their voices speaking to me from a place we all seek but very few of us will ever find. To speak the name of the dead is to make them live again. And restores the breath of life to him who has vanished. So that they might reach the field of reeds. Where everlasting life awaits.